August is a big month for dogs. Is it? Yes, between Doggus, the universal birthday for shelter dogs, Assistant Dog Day, Spoil Your Dog Day, and Snoopy's birthday, there's a lot going on. Not to mention National Dog Day on August 26th. That's right. And you know, we here at Jack Russell Parents Podcast, a podcast for the most fanatic of dog lovers, had to go big for National Dog Day. Absolutely. We want to spoil your fur baby, so we're giving away a $50 PetSmart e-gift card to one lucky family. All you have to do is go to jackrusselparents.com slash giveaway. Listen to a super quick episode for the secret code word and enter to win. That's it? That's it. Can I enter? Uh, no. Oh. But everyone else can. So drop what you're doing and head on over to jackrusselparents.com slash giveaway. Entries close at midnight central time, August 31st, 2021. Good luck, puppy parents. Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Puppy parents, have you ever wondered what your baby dog is thinking? I sure have. Carson turns his head and pulls his ear back at very specific moments like he's thinking, what's up with this guy? (laughs) I know. And I can see his little wheels turning. You can also tell when Carson's feeling playful or I feel like even when he feels guilty about something. And he does this thing where he pulls pillows off the couch. Yeah. (laughs) And and apparently I really like couches because we have a regular living room couch. And then in my office and in my bedroom, we have little smaller couches. And they all have pillows on them, of course. (laughs) You even want a couch in the studio. We haven't gotten there yet, but I would like a couch in the studio. (laughs) Yeah. I think couches and pillows just bring me some sort of comfort. I don't know. Anyway, Carson, our JRT, will pull a pillow off the couch and he'll shake it about, right? Like it's a fuzzy animal or something. And then he'll often drag it into another room. (laughs) And this is something he does. And I don't really know what he's thinking when he does this, but it's something very specific because this is a behavior that he repeats often Mm -hmm. and it's often as a reaction to something. So... What he's thinking, not quite sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. So then I'll go find him wherever he is with that pillow. And then I say, Carson, that is a no touch. And he starts to wag his tail. Like he's purposefully being mischievous or something because he knows he's not supposed to touch those pillows, but he keeps doing it over and over again. So that makes me think he knows exactly what he's doing and what's going to happen. And he treats it like a game he's created or something. So because of that and many other things that he does, we're always pontificating about what Carson might be thinking. So we thought this would be a great episode talking about what do dogs think about? That's right. Today we have an insightful look into how and what dogs Dogs think. Providing us with two interesting perspectives are Dov Demeropoulos with his article, What is Your Dog Thinking? from discovermagazine.com and Kim Cavan with her article, Thinking About How Dogs Think from the Washington Post. We'll also have some really quirky PPRs. So let's start off with some puppy parent replies. <laughs> We asked fellow puppy parents on social media, what do you think your dogs think about? And here are some of the great responses. Dominic F. says, working and food. (laughs) Me too. I think that's all I think about, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) Anthony E. says, attention, affection, treats, squirrels, cats, and ways to wind me up. (laughs) Tracy E. says, Sausages, cuddles, sausages, walking, sausages, playing, sausages, sleeping, sausages, cuddles, sausages, and sleeping. (laughs) (laughs) I'm the same way, but replace sausages with donuts. (laughs) Yeah, it's on that constant (laughs) rotation of thought. (laughs) Belinda M. says, what can I get into next? Mm -hmm. You see the theme. These are Jack Russell parents. Certainly are. 
Maria Z says, going for a walk, other dogs invading her territory, squirrels and treats. And look at that whited out little face. The sweet little face. Happy dog. (laughs) And now that we know a little bit about what other puppy parents think about what their dogs are thinking, let's go a little bit deeper. Stav's article from discovermagazine.com shares that dogs have the same brain structure that produce emotions in humans. See, so we're not wrong in thinking that they have emotions for sure, and it's very much like ours. So they actually have the same hormones and undergo the same chemical changes even, like during emotional states. So, you know, we talk about that hormone oxytocin that promotes like love and affection. So it seems reasonable to suggest that dogs also have emotions similar to us because they have that same hormone. Stav says it's important not to go overboard, which I think we do. (laughs) <laughs> but, yes, <we> do. <laughs> a lot of projecting but yes we i think we project our emotions onto our dogs a lot however it says the mind of a dog is roughly equivalent to that of a human who is two to two and a half years old which ties in perfectly with our episode about how jack russell terriers are like toddlers yeah, right they, they're spirit animals for there's, sure there's proof <laughs> and science proves our point <laughs> So a child that's two to two and a half years old, we can all agree that they have emotions, clear emotions, (laughs) right? (laughs) But not all possible emotions. Stav says that some emotions emerge later in life as we experience new things. So he says that dogs go through their development stages much more quickly than humans, and they attain their full emotional range by the time they are four to six months old. Wow. These Toddler-like emotions are these basic emotions that we can all relate to. Joy, fear, anger, disgust, excitement, contentment, distress, and even love. Now, he says that a dog does not have and will not develop more complex emotions like guilt, pride, contempt, and shame. Objection, Your Honor. Right? (laughs) (laughs) We're like, hmm. (laughs) So his argument is that a lot of us feel like a dog show guilt. So that usual scenario, you come home from work and your dog's acting a little like uncomfortable and sleeking around and then you notice that smelly brown deposit on the kitchen floor. So it's natural to conclude that your dog's reactions are that of guilt because of what they did. However, Dov says that it is simply the more basic emotion of fear. The dog has learned that when you appear and you notice the droppings on the floor, that bad things happen, whether it is they get scolded or they have to go outside, whatever that is. He says what you see in the dog is the fear of punishment and not guilt. He wrote very concretely, he will never feel guilt. I don't know how I feel about that. (laughs) This is like what you always say. Are you sad that you did it or are you sad that you got caught? (laughs) Well... (laughs) Oh, and then he also says he'll never feel shame. So so feel free to dress them in the ridiculous party costume. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like dogs know when you're dressing them up and some of them love it, the attention that they get from that and others don't. No, Wiggles, I swear, he felt so embarrassed and humiliated when we put stuff on him and laughed about it. I don't think he liked it at all. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I don't feel like... I see where you're coming from. You're more of a scientific expert than I am, but that's one perspective. So let's let's take a break from all these deep perspectives and let's talk to some more puppy parents. Okay. (laughs) Deborah C says, I don't think they think so much as they act out of instinct. So she's supporting that first argument there. Tom B. says, I wish I knew sometimes, staring out the garage door, pondering his existence. (laughs) And he includes this adorable picture from behind. He's just looking down the path. What's the meaning of life? That's right. Nick D. says, all my dogs think about is food. (laughs) (laughs) That's a consensus for sure. I had an awesome puppy parent connection the other day. I was rocking my Jack Russell parents t-shirt in the grocery store and because of it, I struck up a great conversation with a lady. And not only did she think my shirt was super cute, she too had a JRT named Wags. And that's a great name. I love it when slogans like dog mom, dog dad, or Jack Russell parents bring people together. 
Me too. And one of my favorite prints is Jack Russell Terriers. Not a breed, a calling. Yeah, raising a JRT just might be the highest calling of all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So are you a proud puppy parent that wants to connect with other puppy parents? Or do you simply like super cute doggy attire to go with your summer shorts? Either way, we have what you need at the Jack Russell Parent Store. All our awesome prints come in a variety of t-shirts, hoodies, baby onesies, laptop sleeves, even coffee mugs. Your choice. To join the doggy squad, check out all the rad merch options at jackrussellparents.com. Simply click on shop at the top and place your order. Go get them, puppy parents! Next, we have Kim Cavins' article from WashingtonPost.com. In this article, she references several studies that help us think about how dogs think. She speaks about Alexandra Horowitz, a senior research fellow at Bernard College in New York City. Horowitz's research in dog cognition, dog thinking, includes the mental processes that go into tasks such as learning, problem solving, and communication. Her research helped open the door to more research into how dogs think. Some more of that research was done by the Canine Cognition Center at Yale University using a game where humans offer dogs pointing and looking cues to spot where treats are hidden. And that study showed that the dogs can follow our thinking even without verbal commands. So they can like read our body language. Carson's good at doing that. Mm Mm-hmm. Max Planck Institute for Evolutionary Anthropology in Germany figured out that dogs are smart about getting what they want. See, this is is where I feel like we're Uh, on the same page here. They will even eat like something that they're not supposed to be eating more frequently when the human can't see them. Right. Right. So they're they're sneaking around. Yeah. It's kind of like how Carson will very. I mean, this is intentional, y'all. He very quietly picks up my shoe that I left by the back door and he slowly walks through the living room and then if you see him and you say hey give me that back he runs faster (laughs) around the corner but I mean how can he not be thinking he's clearly developing a plan he decides he wants to do something and he'll figure out a way to get it done without getting caught how does that not show cognition I don't understand these are premeditated crimes (laughs) (laughs) yeah they are Researchers from Austria, Israel, and Britain determine that a dog seeing their caregiver or their owner versus a stranger actually activated the emotional regions of a dog's brain that show that they have an attachment to this particular person, kind of like a mother-child bond. They have deeper connection with certain human beings, and I think that goes beyond, to me, basic instinct. Additionally, other European researchers showed that negative reinforcement training, um, something as simple as like jerking on a leash, causes lingering emotional changes and makes the dogs less optimistic overall, which I thought was really interesting. You see some of these dogs, they're very well trained, but you see like fear behavior in them. Yes. And I don't I don't think I like that. I don't either. I I like the idea of them obeying you because they love you and, you know, they're they're happy. But seeing that they're afraid, cowering like they're going to get hit or zapped by a collar, uh, it kind of disturbing to me. Right. So we, we want our dogs to be optimistic. So let's find some positive reinforcement. Another experiment that was conducted was having a dog retrieve a treat from a jar that was loosely secured. Then a treat was placed in a jar with a lid completely secured. The interesting thing was to see what dogs asked for help and which ones proceeded to try to figure it out on their own. Both types are thinking, one, how am I going to do this by myself? And the other is, how can I get someone else to help me? That experiment showed that they have different emotions, different motivations, different thinking patterns. Right, exactly. So there are several other studies in this article, but the true conclusion is this, that dogs actually think based on their personality type. Amen. uh, Yes, amen. (laughs) As we know from our own dogs, also from their personal desires, you know, what are they going to get out of it? (laughs) What are they going to get for doing this behavior? I feel like the more happy-go-lucky breeds, like a golden retriever, they're more likely to ask for help or include others, whereas Carson, he's very focused. And if he... When he wants something, 
he's going to get it done on his own, especially yeah. if it's something he's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> he's not going to be asking for help. Absolutely. So let's conclude with some more puppy parent replies because puppy parents are bound to know just what their pups are thinking, right? Right. Let's take their word for it. Yeah, they know. Bev M says, making a plan for her next mission. <laughs> and missions in quotes. <laughs> yeah, see, the premeditated crime. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary D says, treats and how to get them. That's what the dog's thinking about. Cheryl B says, what can I tear up next? <laughs> <laughs> Jody J says her dog thinks about four things. Treats, car rides, walks, and cuddles. Ah, And then Tina W says they think about how lucky they are to be loved. Oh, that's the sweetest answer. Love it. <laughs> One thing is for sure. Our dogs are thinkers. Whether that is purely based on instinct and basic emotions, or if you lean towards them having more complexity than that. We, of course, at Jack Russell Parents, lean towards Carson having more deeper emotions than just the basics. Hence our tagline, more than a dog, almost a person, so much to love. Yes, absolutely. And we do love our little guy. He is one smart thinking machine. Did you enjoy this episode? Did you learn from the content? Or did you just have a good, relatable laugh? Well, now what? It's time to subscribe, follow, keep listening, and give a positive review on the Apple Podcast app. Then share the podcast with other puppy parents. This will allow us to connect you and your friends with fun, dog-loving content week after week. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell Parents. Say bye, Carson. We'd love to connect with you online at jackrussellparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrussellparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.